Hello dear learners, I am Professor Nidhi Tiwari and I am going to talk about writing. Let us understand what is writing. Learning to write is one of the toughest landmarks in language learning. One of the reasons for this is that writing involves the use of multiple abilities at the same time. Now you know that writing should be looked upon in a holistic manner. So before writing we know that listening, speaking, reading are very important and there is a connection between the two. The learner can only come to writing until he has not understood listening, speaking and reading that is really essential. Now what is writing? The definition is writing refers to the act of making symbols and marks on a surface which can be understood by another person. This definition however makes no reference to the important link between language and writing and say a person drawing a picture. The picture is also made on a surface and may often be understood by many other persons but we don't call it writing. The dictionary definition also ignores the important link between speech and writing. Writing is a medium which can be used to express what has been spoken. The written word is more permanent than the spoken message. Spoken language is constantly changing. Written language changes very slowly since there are many social pressures to sustain its form. Let us now look at the fine motor skills. We all know that before a child can learn to write, it is necessary for him or her to develop fine motor skills, that is the ability to grasp. We all know that children find it very difficult to hold the objects. So in order to encourage the development of these skills, children should be allowed to manipulate solid objects as they see it. Holding, turning, twisting and playing with objects develops grasping ability in children. Another very important activity that provides children with enjoyment in addition to developing motor skills essential for writing is drawing. All of us know that we begin with letters first. So practicing letters, words and sentences constitutes writing. It is often believed that achievement of sentence writing is helped by practicing writing letters and then words again and again. We have so many copies available in the market, you know, to support writing. We all know that we talk of cursive writing, but at the same time, we should be very careful that the learner is made to hold the pencil very carefully and move it on a dotted line, which might be indicating a letter. And gradually from a letter, which may be a capital letter, we may have to move to the small letters. And that is how the learner gains confidence in writing letters. From letters, we move on to words. Similarly, the practice in maybe four line copy is very, very helpful in the beginning. And then from words, we move on to sentences. In teaching children to write, two things are of great importance. First, respecting children's abilities and creating meaningful context in which they can learn. Now we must always see that we don't scold, scold children. They should be allowed, even if they are making mistakes in writing, they should be allowed to, you know, pick at their own pace. And then whatever they write should somewhere be connected with some words, some picture, so that there is a meaningful context provided to them. Then only they can learn and can also enjoy writing. Let us now come to elements of good handwriting. Teachers often focus on good handwriting and well-formed letters. Uh, well, I think one has to focus on handwriting and everybody likes to say a good handwriting. But at the same time, 
we must not see that it is a burden for the learner. Let the learner pick up the handwriting and you know enjoy that something looks beautiful, good, appreciate it and then try to form the letters you know. In this context teachers need to appreciate the fact that in spite of uniformity of input and teachers insisting on writing only in one particular way all children eventually evolve their own distinct handwriting. See everybody signs differently, everybody writes differently even though we may be using cursive handwriting, we may be promoting copywriting. So we have to appreciate the difference, we must also in fact appreciate that every learner is special, every person is special and so the writing should be legible and should look good and we should focus on that. We continue with this aspect of good handwriting. They can be helped to develop good handwriting by developing some of the basics essential for writing such as fine motor skills, visual perception, trunk control, pencil grasp, and stability of shoulder through various exercises. So in between the teacher can also attend to these requirements which can instill confidence in the learner. Handwriting as an indicator of dyslexia and other disabilities. We should also be careful that some children might be suffering from dyslexia which refers to reading disorders and such children have serious problems in writing in spite of adequate input. They may see the picture as a whole but they may not be able to see their constituent parts and the handwriting of a person with dyslexia is generally illegible and the teacher should have good observation, should be able to detect this. Remember we had a movie Tare Zamipe and the child had so many problems but the teacher could not see and so we need to pay attention to such children and what do we do here? Let's understand it. Dyslexia shares several of its characteristics with other conditions associated with poor writing skills such as dyspraxia which means poor motor skills and planning, deficits in visual perceptual skills. So the child you know may not be able, may be facing physical problems also and therefore or maybe visually he cannot see it properly. So overall dyslexia and dyspraxia can lead to writing problems and here if but the teacher has any doubt then it has to be ascertained whether this child has a condition because of which he or she needs special help and then it becomes necessary to seek the help of experts such as occupational therapists and they may be able to really look into the requirement of this special child. Now let us come to the characteristics of good writing. Our written language is expected to conform to certain rules of spelling and grammar and when our children come to the primary classes, especially class 4th and 5th, then by the time spelling and grammar is focused upon and when they graduate to writing short paragraphs, it also involves establishing links among different sentences. All these help in creating meaning. And meaning making is really an integral part of language learning. In evaluating children's writing, teachers tend to look for spelling and grammar mistakes. We should not demotivate a child, especially in the primary classes, uh, by emphasizing too much on spelling and grammar mistakes. Let us remember that errors are parts of learning and let the child learn gradually. Do not insult the child. Considering the fact that there is often no one-to-one -one correspondence between the sounds of a language and their representation in writing, it is natural for different children to write differently. Again, language shows high levels of societal and regional variations. So they also tend to influence the writing abilities of a child. 
some, sometimes the sounds from Hindi or other languages may influence. I mean, we have been talking about language interference, though in the modern context, we also say that skills get transferred from one language to another. But sometimes where there is a sound is missing in one language and it's there in another. So to listen and then to take down a dictation, it may create problems and a teacher should be aware about this. To teach correct spelling and grammar to children, they should be given increasingly interesting and challenging writing material to read and should be encouraged to write in various contexts. Now, again, you must remember that we have been talking about the integrated approach to the skills, LSRW skills, and here reading and writing, they connect very well. So if you have had lot of exposure to reading, it definitely helps to write well. Everything we write is meant to be read, even if by no one else, at least by ourselves. The way we write changes according to who we believe is going to read what we have written. So the learner is conscious of the fact that whatever the learner is going to write is going to be read. If it is meant for evaluation, the learner writes in that manner. But we have to make the child tension free and let the child just enjoy writing on topics of his or her interest without bothering about evaluation, just thinking that, okay, I'll read it, my friends will read it. So it should be looked upon in this manner. Coming to the characteristics of good writing, lucidity and brevity are also desired. Since they communicate the meaning of the writer wants to convey with minimum confusion and effort on the part of the reader. Concise and clear writing requires planning in advance of what we want to write, the ideas we want to communicate, the relationship between the ideas, the order in which we want to present them and the point of view we want to present. The child also needs to be given time to review and make changes in what she or he has written. Please remember that you cannot come up with the final draft the very first time. The child should be allowed to read and correct and redraft. Now, what kind of language should a child use? Should it be simple or it should be a flowery language? Normally, there is a belief that good writing is one which uses flowery language with elaborate words and sentence structures. But sometimes such writing can give the impression of being particularly inspired and profound. It misses its purpose if it ends up confusing the readers instead of informing them. So, the children should be encouraged to use such language in writing that their meaning becomes clear. Now, there are two levels at which we have to address the writing skills. First is developing writing skills in lower classes. The development of writing in lower classes will build on the foundation provided by the other language skills, that is listening, speaking and reading. Now what are the activities the teacher can follow and what would really come under this level? The first could be picture composition. This involves presenting children with a picture of objects, single events, multiple events, and asking them to write about it. This writing can include a wide variety of composition. They may also be asked to write a story, to describe a picture, to write a dialogue between the characters, to fill in a missing gap in the picture and write about it. When a series of pictures depicting a story is provided, they can be asked to write the story. So picture composition is often a very, very suitable activity and children love to see pictures and they are able to, you know, come up with some words 
with some sentences. Now there is a picture composition task here before you. So these are pictures of Holi and you can ask the children to describe the pictures and write five sentences on it. Other activities could be developing stories from given outlines. Children can be given rough outline of a story in the form of a series of words and phrases and then asked to build a story using these words and phrases. Please remember that at this time they should be given some support words along with the pictures, some phrases, sometimes few sentences especially when we are in the lower level that is just the primary level class 1 to 5. Another could be independent writing. Children can be asked to write about something that they evidently show great interest in or something that they talk about a lot. This will not only help to develop writing skills but may point the teacher towards more techniques for facilitating learning. And we all know that the teacher is a facilitator. What could the topics related with independent writing could be? We can show them some animals, some pets and they can be asked to collect the picture of the pet animals and all the such pictures can be shown. They can be asked to write the names of these animals. If they should display more abilities, they can come up with some small sentences on these pictures of animals. Other activities could be continuing the story. Children can be told the beginning of a story and can be asked to write what they think happened next. So they can be made to guess what could come up and we can have different endings to a story you see. Dictation of course is commonly used. The teachers speak aloud some words and ask the children to write them to see if they are able to link the spoken sound to their written forms. This is of course a very common uh, classroom activity. The teacher can let children talk about a topic of their interest and write down what they have said. This will clarify the communicative purpose of writing and will link between speech and writing. While teaching children to write, the teacher must allow children to express their own views. Higher forms of writing. Now this is the level which is from class 6 to class 8 and what comes under this form of writing is paragraph writing, letter writing, essay writing, story writing and poetry writing. And these are taught in schools for the development of expression, creativity and communicative ability. Let us take a look at paragraph writing. Here the purpose is to inform to communicate, to express and there can be many topics of interest on which the learner can choose to write paragraphs. Letter writing is covering the area which can be informal as well as formal and the letter writing format has to be taught to the learner by the teacher after which the body of the letter can be focused upon. Moving on to essay writing we all know that this calls for organizing of ideas and here there are many paragraphs and the idea has to develop in each paragraph. So this is really a very challenging area and the teacher has to work a lot. Moving on to story writing, this is a very interesting area and we have already spoken about it in the earlier slides that how children can be encouraged to write stories using pictures and later the story can be narrated by the teacher and they can be asked to provide different endings to it and then those ideas can be compiled by the children and later can be written down. Coming to poetry writing, this is a really fascinating area. And children love to listen to stories many a times. They also like to recite stories, uh, poems and they also love to sing poems. And the teacher can build on this interest of the learner. And for this, first if it is rhyme and a poem is in rhyme, the children can be encouraged to use rhyming words. 
So, if the child has come across words like uh, sun, then the, they can be asked to provide some other rhyming words, some and uh, something uh, uh, some or uh, sun, moon, something like that, which connect with the planets, you know. Then we can move on to pictures. Here the children can be asked to draw the picture of a butterfly. Now the shape of the butterfly you see is like this and only the outline of the butterfly can be drawn and inside the wings of the butterfly they can write some words, they can write some lines, something as simple as uh, fly fly in the sky butterfly so pretty so colorful so majestic butterfly butterfly. So, even if the child writes this, you know, it's a beginning and the child will feel that the child has written some words in that outline of the butterfly. The child can choose to uh, write with some colorful pencils also, so that it gets some colors as well. Similarly, some flowers, some objects can be chosen by the writer, uh, by the learners. Then, uh, the children can be exposed to some haikus which are small poems and the children can be asked to read haikus and that can also encourage them to write you know few lines small poems can come up in this manner and so the creative ability of the learner can easily be enhanced and the children will feel that they can come up with their own poems which definitely will be very very encouraging. Let us now come to the topic paragraph writing. You can see the pictures here, two people are talking to each other. So you have to read the telephonic conversation and then write a paragraph which is based on it. So children can be provided such pictures where two people are speaking on the phone and this can be followed by a telephonic conversation. And the children can read this telephonic conversation and they can be encouraged to write a paragraph on it. Now let us take a look at this telephonic conversation. The conversation goes thus. Hello Sonam. Hi Dad. Monto's train arrives at Habib Ganj at 9.30 am. You have to receive him and take him to Professor's colony. Yes Dad. Pay attention. He has a computer test tomorrow at NIIT Arera colony. Ok dad, leave his luggage at home, give him some breakfast and then take him for the test. Thank God it is a Saturday, so I am free during the daytime. He finishes his test at 7.30 pm, pick him up and put him on train. Where to? To Delhi of course. Now, tell me, what will you do? Oh sure dad, I'll do this work. And so this is how the telephone goes, conversation goes. And we can see that so many cues are already here for the learner to focus upon. And so many sentences are there, so much of uh, dialogue is happening here which can be used by the learners to come up with a paragraph. At this juncture, I would like to also emphasize on the aspect of collaborative writing. What does collaborative writing mean? It means that the teacher can uh, form groups, say of 4 to 5 students and they can work in groups. They can take a look at this conversation, the dialogues and they can discuss it. If they want to add anything further, they can do that also because this is just as a facilitating uh, dialogue and then they can uh, come up with a paragraph and many ideas can be pulled here. The children can uh, talk to each other and they can uh, come up with a task which is based on collaborative efforts. And you all might be familiar as learners what Lev Vygotsky said, Vygotsky said that lot of language happens in social interaction 
and he was the one who came up with the idea of collaborative learning and we can very easily bring in collaborative writing and this will give the confidence to even the shy learner, the learner who is slow, the learner who thinks that he or she cannot even write a sentence properly and this can definitely happen in the upper primary classes where the child has got some command over vocabulary and grammar and already there is this conversation to facilitate the task and in this way a meaningful paragraph can be created by the learners themselves and the teacher will realize that there is so much fun and learning taking place in the class and which is what the teacher must emphasize upon and this is how the learning is definitely going to be promoted and it will instill confidence in the learners and writing will no longer be regarded as something boring or difficult and how to get the right ideas or the vocabulary and maybe later may lead to independent writing as well where they may not have to depend on cues uh, provided by the teacher in the form of words or phrases or sentences. So we have to work a lot in promoting the writing skills of the learners and this a teacher can definitely do it if the teacher is motivated, if the teacher understands the different dimensions of writing, if we look upon writing as a skill which incorporates the earlier skills of listening, speaking and reading and also remember that if you encourage the learner to read a lot, the learner will get ideas for writing and this is how a learner will be a confident writer and writing would be an area to look towards with hope and with interest. Now let us take a look at what Mahatma Gandhi has to say about writing. Mahatma Gandhi says, I saw that bad handwriting should be regarded as a sign of an imperfect education. Why did Mahatma Gandhi say so? You might be aware that there was a time when Mahatma Gandhi's handwriting was not good and he became conscious of that fact and he saw to it that he improves his handwriting. So even handwriting as we said earlier and in the context of now writing as an advanced skill also, we really realize that a beautiful handwriting is the very first thing that attracts and one must work on one's handwriting. So when we have acquired confidence over writing that ought to be presented in beautiful handwriting and then only can we regard education as perfect. And this is where Mahatma Gandhi's words are really so inspiring. So learners, I'm sure that you have benefited from what we have spoken about. There were so many things we have addressed as far as writing skills are concerned. You have understood that writing skill is really an integrated one. It involves the earlier skills of listening, speaking, reading and then we come to writing. You also know what are the characteristics of good writing. You also know how to pay attention to the special needs of dyslexic children. You also know what are the levels to be attended to, what needs to go in at the lower level, what needs to go in at the higher level and finally I'm sure Mahatma Gandhi's lines must have inspired you to think along the lines of perfect education and focusing on writing. I'm sure you must have benefited after listening to all the views and ideas that I have brought to you in this writing skill. Thank you very much.